An immigration and citizenship office in Tukwila was suddenly shut down due to coronavirus. Lots of confusion followed. Kara Sevens Graham Johnson is there live right now. And Graham, federal officials say a worker there also visited a relative in the life care facility in Kirkland. And federal officials, Monique, say they will keep this facility closed for 14 days. That is while the workers who normally are in offices, this office back here, are self-quarantined at home. Now, this is affecting a lot of people who have appointments, and none of the folks we met today had any idea this office was closed when they showed up. It's a day of confusion outside the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services Office in Tukwila. They should have told us that we wouldn't have came all the way over here. Sonia Gonzalez and Arturo Martinez drove two hours for an appointment to get work permits. Yeah, we were expecting to see people with masks and gloves and stuff today. But you didn't expect to see it closed? No. Early this morning, a top Homeland Security official announced the closure on Twitter. But the news did not reach many people who had appointments. Did you get any notification of this? No notification. Were you surprised when you saw that sign? I was pretty surprised. Yeah, I didn't receive any notice. Federal officials say an employee here visited a relative at Life Care in Kirkland before the coronavirus outbreak in the nursing home was known and then came to work. That employee stayed home when feeling sick, but federal officials say out of an abundance of caution, they are directing all employees here to self-quarantine for 14 days. That means this office will stay closed. Leaving in a few hours for a flight and uh, the office is shut. Phil Gorman needs paperwork to return to the U.S. after visiting his sick mother in Australia. It's apparently a 369-minute wait on the callback for an officer who can possibly help me. Beata Bassett will have to reschedule her big day. Today, actually, I was going to be sworn in, so today was my citizenship day. There are a lot of important appointments that happen here. Today, the acting Homeland Security Secretary praised the employee involved in this, saying that worker took every precaution and followed the guidance of public health officials. Live in Tukwila, Graham Johnson, Cairo 7 News. The Port of Seattle today announced new coronavirus cleaning and sanitation measures at SeaTac, uh, make that Se Seattle Tacoma International Airport. The enhanced protocols build on changes first implemented about a month ago. Hand sanitizer stations will be doubled to 90. A hundred more will be added after that. Cleaning frequencies at SEA also increased at uh, all so called high touch points. Those include handrails and elevator buttons. Janitorial staff have also been trained in biohazard cleaning. And this afternoon, we're getting an inside look at how a school where a student had the coronavirus is being cleaned. Kara 7 North Sound reporter Ryan Sims is live outside Jackson High School in Mill Creek. And Ryan, it took a lot of work to get that school reopened this morning. It took a team of people, Monique. In fact, several of the cars in this parking lot uh, have been here since Friday. That's when dozens of people showed up here uh, to help clean this entire school after a student got sick with coronavirus. Jackson High School has weathered a sanitizing storm. Regina Wyman, each scrub down, it's like a science. A light coat, let it sit, wipe them down. As the head custodian at Jackson High, Gina and her coworkers are at the tail end of an epic deep clean. Since last Friday, any high touch area here has been drenched and then desanitized. Very daunting. <laughs> you know, it's a big school, and um, you know, you think at first, like, oh yeah, we're going to clean it, no problem, and then all of a sudden, it's like, oh my gosh. It's definitely been an intense time. On Saturday alone, Gina and her co-workers put in a 14-hour day. It came Sunday, and then came Monday. Every nook and cranny of this school sprayed with hospital-grade disinfectant. They're filled up with at least a good 5, 10 gallons of, of chemical. And we went around the school and just started from top to bottom. To give Gina as much help as possible, the Everett School District brought in custodians from other schools. At the height of the desanitation effort, dozens of people cleaned these hallways. As classes finally resumed today, their efforts didn't go unnoticed. It smelled like Lysol when I walked into school, so I feel like they did a good job. Kids are feeling safe, teachers are feeling more comfortable, and uh, so I'm just, I'm really pleased at, at, at the feel of the tone right now. Everybody came in today and it smells clean, you know, and so I'm just, I'm very happy with what we did. 
And back here live, as for the Jackson High School student who was diagnosed with coronavirus, we actually talked to a few of his friends today. We're told that that student is doing incredibly well. He is on the mend in home quarantine, even then, though, uh, you will not be seeing him on this campus uh, for another two weeks. We're live in Mill Creek tonight. Ryan Sims, Cairo 7 News. The coronavirus is having a direct impact on business in Seattle. Warehouser just closed its Seattle headquarters out of an abundance of caution. That follows REI headquarters and Liberty Mutual. That happened earlier today. Carol Sevens Deborah Horn is live now for us in downtown Seattle. And Debbie, other workers have to be noticing this. Indeed, they are, including businesses, Steve. But the owner of this business right here says he is choosing to remain open for business. Thank you for calling Seattle Flowers. The owner of Seattle Flowers says he is staying up on the fast-moving coronavirus developments. From watching the news every day, and I do, I'm paying very close attention to this because I'm very concerned about my staff and the fact that we're interacting with the public all the time. But Bill Rieg is not closing his shop. I think it's an overreaction at this point. That may be, but Liberty Mutual closed its downtown Seattle office for the rest of this week. The company says an employee self-reported a potential exposure to COVID-19. Tech giant F5 closed for a day yesterday. It is all affecting others who work in downtown Seattle. How are you feeling? Um, I mean, I'm a little nervous about it just because I was, you know, in the elevator with the other Liberty Mutual employees while they were talking about it. I would, you know washing my hands a lot. <laughs> Honestly, it's a bit terrifying. I just came back myself from a, a nine-day trip away. Nakia Washington says she is reconsidering just about everything. I'm wondering, should I be at work? Um, I didn't ride public transportation a day. I opted to use Uber instead, which is an additional cost. So yeah, just really switching up a lot of things in our day-to-day -day right now. Even Bill Reek has made one concession to the virus, how his driver delivers flowers to hospitals. If a patient is ill or whatnot, we'll leave it out at the nurse's station or at the front desk. And um, his safety is number one concern. He says they are also su suggesting that his workers wash their hands more, use more sanitizers, which of course we're all supposed to be doing. But Liberty Mutual tells us they have no confirmed infection of the coronavirus on their property and they are expected to remain closed through the end of this week. Reporting live in Seattle, Deborah Horn, Cairo 7 News.